Hello and welcome back to our Ocarina of Time playthrough. In our last video, we took on the Forest Temple and defeated Phantom Ganon. Thank you. Because of you, I could awaken as a sage. I am Saria, the sage of the forest temple. I always believed that you would come because I know you. No. You don't have to explain it to me. Because it is destiny that you and I cannot live in the same world. I will stay here as the forest sage and help you. Now please take this medallion. Alright, we have the forest medallion now, so we have two out of six medallions. I will always be your friend. <laughs> Hi there, I'm the Deku Tree Sprout. Because you and Saria broke the curse on the Forest Temple, I can now grow and flourish. Thanks a lot. Hey, have you seen your old friends? None of them recognized you with your grown-up body, did they? That's because the Kokiri never grow up. Even after seven years, they're still kids. You must be wondering why you're the only one who's grown up. As you might have guessed already, you're not actually Kokiri, you're actually a Hylian. I'm happy to finally reveal this secret to you. Some time ago, before the King of Hyrule unified the country, there was a fierce war in our world. One day, to escape the fires of the war, the Hylian mother and her baby boy entered the Forbidden Forest. The mother was gravely injured and her only choice was in to entrust her child to the Deku Tree. The Deku Tree could sense that this was a child of destiny whose fate would affect the entire world. After the mother passed away, the baby was raised by the Kokiri and now finally I guess we were that baby. You are a Hylian, and you were always bound to leave this forest. And now you have learned your own destiny, so you know what you must do. That's right, you must save the land of Hyrule. Break the curses on all the temples and return peace to Hyrule. Hey. It was a surprise to learn that Saria was one of the sages, wasn't it? I wonder how Sheik knew. Anyway, off to the Temple of Time. So we're gonna head there now. I'll cut the running through Hyrule Field probably. There we go. We're here at uh, Hyrule Castle Town. We're going to go see Sheik in the Temple of Time. First, we need to avoid some re-deads. Now, today's video is going to be a little different. It's where we're starting to play this game a little out of order. Once we, of course, finish up at the Temple of Time.
But we want to go here first, just because it'll make things easier later. Temple of Time looking fresh as hell with the texture upgrade, that's for sure. You destroyed the wicked creatures that haunted the temple and awakened the sage, but there are still other sages. In order to awaken the sages, you must become even more powerful and travel over mountains, underwater, and even through time. If you want to return to your original time, return the master sword to the pedestal. By doing this, you'll travel back in time seven years. If you want to challenge the mighty foes you've defeated again, make your way for the bed in your childhood home. In the realm of dreams, you should be able to face them anew. The time will come when you have to return here quickly. I'll teach you this song, the prelude of light. So if we play this, it'll return us here automatically. You have learned the Prelude of Light. As long as you hold the Ocarina of Time and the Master Sword, you hold time itself in your hands. We shall meet again. <laughs> Alright, so now we get to start sequencing, sequence breaking this game. So we're actually going to head to the Zora's Fountain and the Zora's Domain. It's going to be looking a little bit different now that we're an adult. Everything is frozen over. But we're going to head right to the Zora's Fountain, where we formerly went inside Jabu Jabu's belly. Of course, the king of the Zoras is frozen in some sort of red ice. So this is the Zora's Fountain when we're here as an adult. Jabu Jabu is gone. And there's just some like chunks of ice floating around in the empty fountain. Of course, love ice physics. I know everyone's uh, favorite thing in video game is ice physics, ice levels, and water levels. Definitely the highlight of every video game. kind of interesting that there's uh, so many water themed video games getting made like Subnautica and Maneater and Abzu. A lot of these like underwater games you'd think with everything people have learned about water and video games they'd kind of be more hesitant to make video games like that. Okay so we gotta do some spinning on ice platforming just to make things more interesting. The ice also wobbles up and down with uh, your weight shifting on it. But we did it. We're here. So this is going to be the first thing we're playing out of order. We're meant to come here after the fire temple. But we're coming here now just for fun. We'll see if anything stops us from collecting the uh, good old iron boots. Aside from uh, ourselves getting frozen, which I'm sure is going to happen here a lot. So in order to uh, continue on playing these dungeons out of order, we need to acquire both the Iron Boots and the Zora's Tunic. 
which is kind of my goal for today's video. But we've already collected the prelude of light, so we're actually going to be getting a few things in this video. Now, I've been kind of debating on whether I want to collect the uh, big Goron sword before the water temple. Because I've done this kind of sequence breaking before. And I know you, you're at a huge disadvantage going into the water temple without the Megaton Hammer. As I've learned in the past, it makes one specific battle quite difficult. Not having both the magic upgrade and the Megaton Hammer that we would have collected in the Fire Temple. Now that can be uh, a little bit fixed if we collect Big Goron's Sword. Which would also, I think, require us collecting a Pona, but I haven't decided if I'm going to do that before the Water Temple or not. It's not required, it just makes things easier. In fact, the big Goron Sword's not actually required for anything. It may actually be possible to beat the game without a Pona. I've never really tried, but... The big thing that I think a Pona unlocks is... Uh, jumping over that bridge in... Uh, Gerudo Valley, but... I think you can get across that with the long shot. So it may be possible to... Uh, get through the game without a Pona. I've just never really looked into it. I've always just collected the horse because it makes getting around faster. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool to do, like, a minimalist playthrough where you collect as few items as possible and still try to beat the game. Try to find, like, creative solutions around some of the problems that require specific items. Of course, we have to get frozen again. The only thing more annoying than fire keys, I think, are the ice ones. Just because they slow down your gameplay as well as injuring you. Collecting as much blue fire as we can. Because I think in total we'll end up needing about five. We can only hold three, but... We'll come back and collect two more later. We only really need three to complete the, uh, the dungeon here. But I would like two more to thaw out uh, King Zora and probably the shop in the Zora's Domain. So this is the first one we're going to need. So the blue fire will actually melt the red ice. I think there is another pathway we can take to get like the map and compass and... I think there might be a gold Skullchilla back there, but if we can avoid it, I will, just to uh, speed up the, the dungeon a little bit. Okay, there's one more of them. I'm going to get them before we end up getting frozen again. Okay, so we have this little block pushing puzzle coming up where uh, we push the platform and it'll get stuck on these little pieces of ice sitting up. 
and we can use that to navigate around the room and collect all these silver rupees to unlock the door. Okay, so the next one's covered by this red ice, so that's the next blue fire we needed. If we only had one bottle, we'd be heading back to that previous room to collect more fire right now. Okay, there, it looks like there's only two left. Now you can reset the platform anytime by just throwing it off the edge. It'll just come back in its original starting position. Okay, let's go get that last one and then the door should open for us. Now once we're uh, done defeating th this dungeon, we'll come back and get some blue fire from right here, probably. This room just seems easier than uh, backtracking to where we got the blue fire originally. Funny, they've had this uh, this same kind of puzzle in other Zelda games in the past. I know there's one very similar to this in uh, I think it's the Minish Cap. I think it might be like the Temple of Droplets or something, where there's the ice and you have to push a platform between uh, between these ice blocks in the right order to climb places. Seems like the same kind of puzzle, actually. Of course, Ocarina of Time would have come out first, so... Maybe they copied it from this, unless it was also in A Link to the Past. It's been a long time since I've played something like A Link to the Past, so I can't remember if they did it first. Okay, so this was the last blue fire we needed to complete this dungeon. Now this boss fight has kind of always felt a little undercooked. Just a regular wolf fight. Normal wolf folks. It's white, so it looks different from all the others, but it fights and has the same health as all the other ones we fight. I think you're actually meant to use the iron boots in that water behind the chest to get out of here. Okay, we have the iron boots now, and here comes Sheik. We meet again. If you came here to meet with the Zoras, you wasted your time. This is all there is. With one exception, the Zoras are now sealed under the thick ice. I managed to rec rescue the Zora princess under the ice, but she left to head for the water temple. The ice is created by an evil curse. The monster in the water temple is the source of this curse. Unless you shut off the source, this ice will never melt. If you have the courage enough to confront the danger and save the Zoras, I will teach you the melody that leads to the temple. Time passes, people move like a river's flow, it never ends. 
A childish mind will turn to noble ambition. Young love will become deep affection. The clear water surface reflects growth. Now listen to the serenade of water to reflect upon yourself. You have learned the serenade of water. I'll see you again. <laughs> Alright, so we could go out with the iron boots behind that chest, but I want to collect some more blue fire so we can thaw out the king of Zoras. So we're coming back to this block pushing room to uh, collect fire and get frozen again. Love the ice keys. I don't know if I can make the jump from there, so we're going to push forward a little bit more. I wish it wouldn't give us that notification every time we collect it. In most items, it'll do that the first time you get an item. But for some reason, the blue fire does that every time we collect it. I'm not really sure why. Okay, so I'm just going back out the way we came in. Yeah, I think if we melt that red fire, like, the compass is back there and, like, a gold sculptula, but that's just going to slow down our progression, so I'm going to skip that. I'm not going for a 100% run on uh, sculptulas anyway. The rewards just aren't worth it. I mean, it's technically still better than Breath of the Wild's golden poop for collecting all the hidden Korok seeds, but it's still not worth it. Alright, let's just swim for it. I'm not going to bother climbing back up to platform our way back. Alright, let's thaw this guy out and see what he has to say. Oh, I've come back to life. Was it you who saved me? Don't be nervous. It looks like you have a hard time breathing underwater. As an expression of my gratitude, I'll give you this tunic. Alright, so we now have everything we need to enter and take on the water temple. So I think that's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for watching. 
and come back and see our next video in this Ocarina of Time sequence break playthrough. Bye for now.